What's happening guys, it's Abhinav from Phone Bunch and here's our unboxing of the Redmi Note 3. So folks, this is the retail unit of the Redmi Note 3. We have got it in grey color. This is the 2GB RAM, 16GB storage variant. Rest of the things remain the same. We have the Snapdragon 650, a 5.5-inch 1080p display and a 4050mAh battery. Huge battery inside here. So let's have a look what we get inside the box. So first of all, you have the Redmi Note 3 in grey color. So the back is grey, the front is black here. Now you do get some documentation about the phone. You can have a look at it. And there's the SIM ejector tool too. Now this phone has a unibody metal construction, so you can't remove the back cover. And here's the 5 volt 2 amp USB charger that you get within the box. Now the Redmi Note 3 charges in about 3 hours and 1 hour it gets you to about 50%. Now that's a pretty humongous battery inside. So folks, here's the Redmi Note 3. It really feels great to hold in hand. Just from the moment that you get the device, you'll feel that. It's not that hefty. And for some reason, they have the sticker attached to the back. It's pretty hard to remove. You can see that there. Anyways, I'll just come back after removing that. It took a bit of time to get that removed, to clean it off actually. The glue on there. But yes, as I said earlier, this phone feels really premium. You really won't believe this phone costs just Rs. 10,000. Which brings me to the solid build quality as well. The buttons on the right have excellent tactile response. At the top, you can find the infrared blaster as well as the 3.5 audio jack. Now on the left, you have the hybrid SIM card slot. Which means that you can either use two separate SIM cards or one SIM card and one micro SD card. And we have checked that 64 gigs of storage are supported. I presume 128 gigs would be supported as well. Now at the bottom, you'll find the micro USB data syncing and charging port as well as the primary microphone. Now at the back, you have the new 16 megapixel camera, dual LED flash and that fingerprint sensor. Bottom, there's a speaker and there's a slight notch at the bottom, which does raise the back a little bit when the phone is kept flat on any surface. So sound won't get muffled that easily. And as I said earlier as well, this phone doesn't feel bulky. The soft touch metallic finish as well as the rounded sides make it very pleasing to hold. Now I know some of you are going to worry about the SAR limit. It's 1.25 and it's under the government prescribed limit. Now again, you have the usual set of sensors, your proximity and light sensor as well as a notification LD and 5 megapixel camera up top. Just below the display, you have capacitive buttons which again do light up. Now this is a 5.5 inch 1080p IPS panel. It looks sharp, it looks vivid and it is plenty bright as well. We don't know of any protection if there is, but yes, it does seem to have an oleophobic coating. And coming to that camera, there is a manual control available there where you can control white balance and ISO and the little time that I spent with the camera, it actually did a pretty decent job. Color reproduction was good. And there's one kicker here. This phone can actually record in 4K, but not with the default camera app. You would have to install the Google camera app from the Play Store. Now coming back to the software, we are already quite familiar with MIUI. This phone is running MIUI 7.1, which is based on Android 5.1.1 Lollipop. So here too, you have widget support baked in, you can change wallpapers, you can change themes. There's quite a lot of customization built into the device itself. We have already talked about MIUI in quite a lot of detail in our other videos. You can see a review of the Redmi Note 2 for more. Now, you can see that right here as well, MIUI Global ROM 7.1. Now talking about storage, you will get about 9.25 gigs when you get the device. Uh, it's plenty of storage, but yes, apps are not movable to the external SD card, but thankfully, USB OTG is supported. And if we come to available RAM, you can see that we have about 913 odd MB when there is no app running in the background. So that's the total amount of RAM that is available on the device itself. Rest is taken by the system and MIUI. Which now brings me to the fingerprint sensor. It is very swift and it's very easy to set up as well. But strangely, it allows for the same finger to be added multiple times. Actually, I tried it adding five times. Nothing wrong with it, it's just an observation. But the thing is, it works superb. It's very fast and it works every single time. I haven't had even a single miss up till this point. And it's not just the fingerprint sensor, the whole experience on the device is actually far better than what its price says. 
Web browsing worked great, apps opened up quickly and I didn't notice any heating or any lag whatsoever on this device. And this wasn't running on performance mode, it was just running in balance mode throughout this duration. And you can see even after opening so many apps, Chrome was still loaded in memory. Well folks, that was our first look at the 16 gig variant of the Redmi Note 3. Even this one actually performs quite well. Now there is a 3 gig RAM variant available as well. We weren't able to buy that this time around. So should you get this one and save 2000 bucks or go for the 3 gig RAM variant? That's a question we'll try to answer with our gaming, camera and other reviews. Stay tuned to PhoneMunch. Thanks for watching this video and as always have a great day.